Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today, dogs and their owners strut their stuff at Palapalooza. And I prepare a dupe of Carbone's famous spicy rigatoni. But first, the jaw-dropping amount of games at Pastimes Arcade in Girard. Well, the Casey Malone Show has been waiting quite a while to join Mr. Rob Burke at his pastime arcades. And I've got to tell you, this is more stupendous than I imagined. This has to be the largest. Welcome to Paradise. Welcome to Paradise. Now, how many um, pinballs are we talking? Well, between pinballs and videos, we have about 600 games here. But first, a little backstory. About 20 years ago, I was at a party at um, Rob and Bridget's home. And the basement was loaded with about 60 to 80 pinball machines, all in working order. And I'm thinking, this guy is nuts. Look at all these machines. And when Bridget reminded me, I said, of course it's Bob Bob. What started the passion? Like, what was your first machine? When when did this begin? When I was a young, young guy, five years old, uh, we had a pinball machine in our basement. My dad bought it, I guess, for me for entertainment. Right. Little did I know what it was or how to even play it. And then I went to college. That further fueled it, and I saw pinball right. machines everywhere. And then I started having a passion to the point that I really enjoyed them. To the point where I actually did a pinball show in Chicago, honoring my heroes who were the pinball designers and the artists. And that took place back in 1985. And the show was such a success that uh, people said, hey, when's the next show? I said, there is no show, n- next show. I just, I want to do it one time. And uh, this year will be uh, show number 39. We've been doing it 39. Wow. Yeah. I saw that you want to get us um, record yeah. for the most continuous pinball, pinball shows. shows. Yeah. So now this entire aisle are all from Spain. And Italy. And Italy. I didn't know there was such a market for that. So there was a time when, um, the games from the U.S. were not permitted to be exported to that part of the world and uh, because of some sort of laws they had. So they, they started their own industry of pinball for several years. And these are all games made in Spain and in Italy for their unique markets. And they were not meant for export to the U.S. Some did export to the U.S., but the majority ended up in Europe. So you're seeing games that you wouldn't see anywhere else this is a very unique selection. How do you power? Well, How, I have a father-in-law that, that is an electrical engineer, and we call him Paps. And because <laughs> of Paps, uh, he made this work. But we have rows and rows of electrical conduit going down here to feed the electrician to keep all these games running. I mean, and this is a lot of games. It is a lot of games. And as I was driving here this morning, I was thinking, how the heck does he have that many outlets and that much power? Because yep. that's a heck of a fuse box. You and we've had no <laughs> nothing, no uh, circuit breakers have gone off yet. So The first thing I learned that I needed to do was be able to read a schematic. So what's pretty crazy about these is that every game you can still get a schematic. So it's just a piece of paper. And has, this is in every machine? Yeah. It's so cool. I feel like you're a treasure hunt. Yeah. So it's it's oh essentially. <laughs> God, you know how to read this? Yeah, it's it's essentially a flow chart of electricity. This is called analog. So it's either on, off, yes or no. It's similar to, to some basic coding where you have to find in the code where things break down or where it's stopping. And so, then where you allow it to move on or where it blocks it. Correct. Right. Yeah. See, I learned something in that robotics class <laughs> when we were at Sharon at the Sharon schools. But without so, these, it would be, it's extremely difficult because yeah. these can help you pinpoint, I mean, down to a very switch that you can locate in the game. I mean, there's definitely a learning curve, but rather easily once you're able to, to understand the basic logic of this. Exactly. And then do you have a couple of these machines and that's how you... Yeah, I have about... How many do you have? <laughs> Are you I think I'm up to 18. No, not quite with Rob. <laughs> I think I have about 18 at this point, yeah. And are they all this style? Yeah, all of them are electromechanical that I have, with the exception I have a digital skee-ball machine. 
and then I have a, an arcade game, a video game. But as far as my pinballs go on some other Man, games, electromechanics. It's very precious. Yeah. Do you ever get machines that don't have this command? A lot. Quite a bit. And then, are, are, is there an archive where you can find them? Sure, yeah. There's actually a place up in New York called Pinball Resource that you can buy uh, the schematics and paperwork for a lot of the games. Uh, so this this company here is called Gottlieb, and actually the um, the paperwork is still under license. So you have to get it from a gentleman up in New York who has the rights to the paperwork. But the other big companies of the era, Williams and Bally and Chicago Coin, you can actually download those right offline. So your father is also shares your passion. That's how I accidentally got into the hobby. Okay, all right. I bought this game. I knew he loved growing up in the arcades when he was a kid. Okay. And uh, one morning we went out to breakfast and I asked him what his favorite game was. He said North Star and I knew nothing about pinball at all. Nothing. Well, I got online and started looking it up because about three weeks later was his birthday. And I always thought, wouldn't it be really cool to get dad a pinball machine? Really? And there was a gentleman in Clary named Knotts who he had this online and I sent him a message and said, it's my dad's favorite game. Would you be willing to sell it? And so I bought it and I remember when <laughs> you're getting all choked up yeah. thinking about it because it's, your dad had to i mean oh was, it was such an incredible it's, feeling oh, giving me, <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. so he um we I, I got it working fully and took it down its basement i repainted the cabinet and um he came downstairs my brother was in on the plan so my brother took right. him out to dinner and then he said we we're gonna go play pool and he came down the stairs and he said where in the world did you find that Oh my gosh. And so I said, how long has it been since you've seen this game? And he said, it's been 50 years. And he said, does it play? Like he didn't even care. As <laughs> he just wanted to it's in his So Nick uh, wears many hats. You do the marketing, <laughs> you do some of the repair work. But these machines are not part of this because these are for sale. These ones are for sale. Yeah, we have, we actually have these games on the floor. Um, but if, if you actually want, we get a lot of people that come in and they ask if I if want the games one. are, are exactly. for sale. right? Yeah, yeah we, we've had a lot of people that just come in and, and expect this to be a showroom for sale. No, the showroom. I mean, you've got part. some big games here. Absolutely. I mean, look at this one. You've got the uh, twenty-year reunion to Ms. Pac-Man. Yep. This is cool, and I love you have the Wurlitzer. This, this is it is a Wurlitzer. <laughs> it's an updated. It's a, it's a CD version. Right. You know, we, we also we do have uh, a couple forty-five versions in the back. So that, that's the beautiful thing. We're, we're five minutes off of Highway 80, which is, and there are places like this all over the country, you know, in, in Las Vegas and in, in Nashville. And I can't imagine Portland. they're this large now. But, and that's the thing, those are all in, in destination cities already. You're mm -hmm. gonna go to the Grand Old Opry when you're in Nashville. You're gonna go to the Strip when you're in Vegas, mm -hmm. but this is the destination here. But listen guys, when you come here, you pay one price and you play all day. I mean, you're not gonna throw them out. It's not like one hour and you're no. done. We, uh, so you can put 12 hours here. You know, if you have to sleep under the pinball machine and take a little break. But no, this is really, you, I really can't thank you enough. This is. I thank you. This is really a great addition. And I hope your audience yet. enjoys it because you can't put it into words. There's just you, so much stuff here. You to believe, I believe it. it. You really do. Kamara Jewelers is the place to buy an engagement ring because we want a relationship with you that lasts a lifetime. Your commitment with her is the same commitment we have to you. We want to sit down with you and teach you about diamonds so you're educated on what you're buying. We have the largest selection we ever have, which is the largest in the area and at the best value. And if it's not something in our case, we could always custom make it. We can make any dream come true. Get real, get Kamara. Join the Island Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available. Given is living. Join the Island Purple Cat family. Employment opportunities are available at $13 an hour. Given is living. Woolley Brothers has a great choice of quality cheeses. We use our relationship with Old World Houses to specially select the product and then have it custom cut and packaged by our own local artisans. At Woolley Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Locally sourced is good, whether it's ingredients or a bank. And that's why my bank is Farmers National Bank. 
Since 1887, Farmers has remained rock solid through every economic condition. Having a bank with a history of safety, soundness, and conservative management is a must. It all boils down to this. You need a bank that will help you reach your goals. I do too. And Farmers is mine. Farmers National Bank. Rock solid. Well, I am super excited to share this recipe with you. It is a dupe of Carbone's spicy rigatoni. And I think you're gonna love it. It is one of my favorite recipes. And the secret that gives it the spice is this chopped Calabrian peppers. From Italy, this is what you must absolutely have to make this dish. And it's really easy. It goes by pretty quickly. And um, let's go over the ingredients and we are going to make spicy rigatoni. For this recipe, you'll need two medium onions, halved and thinly sliced, five tablespoons of unsalted butter, one quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, three cloves of garlic chopped, two tablespoons of tomato paste, 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes, one tablespoon of sugar, one half cup of heavy cream, two tablespoons of Calabrian chili paste, one quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, one pound of rigatoni and grated Parmesan cheese. What you need to do before you do anything else is take a half cup of water, five tablespoons of the unsalted butter and the onions and you cook them covered for an hour and a half over low heat. This sweetens the onion and this is one of the big secrets to the dish. So what I'm going to do is just remove all this and set it aside and then I'm going to start the sauce and we'll add these towards the end. All right, so now I am going to put the olive oil, about a quarter of a cup, into this pan. We are going to warm it up until it gets shimmery. So I have warmed up the olive oil. It is nice and shimmery. And now I'm gonna add the garlic. We do not want the garlic to burn. So I am just gonna spread this around just for about a minute or so. Now, we're going to add these tomatoes. I use the San Marzano's and instead of chopping them, I just break them up with my hands. You know, it's much easier. So now we got the garlic going. We are going to add the tomatoes. I didn't show you how I broke them up with my hands, but I think you got a pretty good idea. And then I'm going to add this tomato paste. And then I'm going to add the sugar. I usually do not put sugar in my sauce, but the recipe called for it. I am being obedient with it. And now we are just gonna mix this down and we are gonna let this all come together for about 10 minutes or so. Well, before I do the next part of the sauce, I'm going to put the noodles in. And then I'm using the metta, the small, Rigatoni, but you could use whatever size you want, but I just like the smaller. I think it works better. And um, the al dente is about 10 minutes. So I am going to set it for nine because we are going to put it back in the pan and cook it. And um, then we'll finish up the sauce. In the meanwhile, the sauce has cooked nicely. Now we're going to add those wonderful onions back in. And we're gonna turn this up just a little bit, medium. And then these hot peppers. Oh my God, these really are the game changer. Look at, look at that lovely oil. And then the flakes. We'll stir this up and combine this. And then we are going to add the heavy whipping cream and we'll let that sit and it will all combine. So let's do that. Now wait till you see it turns sauce such a pretty color. It's pink winky. Okay. So then we just whisk this in. Ooh, I'm making quite a mess here. Turn it up just a little bit more. And we are just gonna let this all 
go together and cook a little further until the pasta is done. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Now I'm gonna dump the pasta and get it strained, but before you do, save some pasta water. You may need it to loosen up this sauce. All right, so now we are going to dump these beautiful little noodles into the sauce and I'll turn it off. And then we are just gonna mix this all up and what we are looking for is a smooth, glossy looking sauce and pasta. So once I get this all fixed up, I do think this is pretty thick. And it looks to me like I'm gonna have to add a teeny weeny bit of pasta water. Now don't go crazy and add it. I mean, just do it like a tablespoon or two at a time because you really don't wanna get this all gooey and mushy. But I think it just needs a little bit. And we're looking for it to be real shiny. See, just a little bit. Use extreme caution. See, and that loosened it up just enough. All right. Oh, this is gonna be so good. So we'll get this plated and we are going to eat. There's really no garnish to this. No green or anything. And you just scoop this out. And then you pass some grated Parmesan at the table. That's how easy it is. So, we gotta try it. I'm so bummed my mom's not here. She loves this dish and she is busy today. She's a busy lady. But she absolutely loves this pasta. So does my husband. Okay. Mmm. Really good batch. I really encourage you to make this. You're gonna love it. I'm drinking a nice dry red Grenache. It is a Spanish La Roca. It's very good, very reasonable in my price range. And uh, it really works well with this dish. Mm. So go to my website. CaseyMaloneShow.com. Look for, it's going to say, it's a dupe, but it will say Carbone uh, Spicy Rigatoni. Honestly, you can thank me later. Cheers. Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. At Ruli Brothers Market, our family is in the store. I'm Elizabeth Bernard. For more than 30 years, I've provided our Valley with sound legal advice. My associate Jennifer Rigetti and I will be your legal representatives if you're involved in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident. Don't try to handle it yourself. We'll navigate the red tape of dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the obstacles that you'll face. Remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases, and hiring a lawyer does not mean you have to go to court. Call attorney Elizabeth Bernard, local legal experience for more than 30 years. It's happening now. Construction is underway at Gabacam. A year-round destination for adults with disabilities and their families to get away close to home, accessible to all, with no barriers. Donate now to Gabacam. Given is living. 
Join the Down Syndrome Association of the Valley as we unite for a common cause and raise funds at the 2023 DSAB Buddy Walk. Whether you have Down Syndrome, know someone who does, or just want to show your support, take the first step and donate or register today at DSAV.org. Join the fun as we celebrate abilities and spread the message of acceptance, inclusion, and respect for all. Proceeds from the Buddy Walk are used to support individuals with Down Syndrome and their families in Eastern Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. I cannot believe my buddy, Yvonne, is the president of the Junior League. Look at the man. Valley. Look at this. Out. Yes, two Youngstown girls here, right? <laughs> That's right. I know. So, as president, mm -hmm. you help oversee this Paula Palooza. Yes, and all the other organizational events we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really a great event. This is mm -hmm. your second year. Second year. And, you know, what does the Junior League do for our community? The Junior League was set up in 1932, and we're part of the national or international Junior League out of New York. And our purpose is to do positive community events and build leadership skills in women. So that's the two main focuses of the Junior League. And do you have, um, how many members do you have right now? We have about 250 members. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a yes. lot. Yes. And like this kind of event, what, what will the proceeds from this event do? Well, this event basically is a family, just a family friendly, family fun event. So we really don't make a profit off of this event. It's mostly just to have a good time good and will. be out in the park and to support families. And look at this one. This is a miniature long hair Dotson. Dotson. Sabrina. Sabrina, look at her. And her mommy bought her a Barbie dress. <laughs> Hallapalooza has really become a signature event now. Mm -hmm. What other events do you have that you know people look forward to? Yeah, well, the 29th year of our Pink Ribbon Tea, and that is in October, and we've been having it, like I said, 29 years, and that wow. is where we invite about 500 women, and we offer them um, a tea to become a lunch, and we have speakers, and it's just a great day it's for survivors. Survivors, right. and it's a wonderful day. Um, we also started a few years ago, it's now called Strong Girls, Strong Women, and it's a program to support um, at-risk teenage adolescent girls. Yeah. And we've been yeah. putting those workshops on um, throughout the year, different places, sometimes um, Trouble County, sometimes Mahoning County. So it just, you know, we're flexible, but we want to hit, we are now Trumbull, Mahoning, and Columbia, Anna County. That's Junior League of Mahoning a lot Valley. of territory to mm -hmm. cover. Yes, it is. Well, you're pretty strong at over 200 members, but you're always looking for more. Always looking for more. We're starting a provisional class in September. So if you would like to be involved or start with our class, please contact us. Yeah, I'd love put to that have you. Information down the right now. And uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm really impressed. President. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. I'm such a long way. I'm I so know. Two young sound girls right here. <laughs> so, Kayla, where are you from? I am from um, New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. And you came all the way I in. I did. Because of Princess Jezebel. Yes. Great. Yes. And what a beautiful show team. Well, thank you so much. She is the love of my life. I love her so dearly. Now, what is her talent? What are you going to well, do when you're uh, she, out there? She, well, she is a very good um, at laying down and she loves to shake her toy in her mouth and squeak it. And she also is good at sitting. So, so we, she follows you on that. Yes, she does. And now do you have to give her treats every time you, you know, uh, usually, yes, yeah, sometimes. Oh, she is beautiful, but, and I love her little rainbow. Yes, yeah, she is. Is that her Halloween costume? That is her Halloween costume. <laughs> she actually has a whole wardrobe at home, <laughs> and she is my little diva. She is adorable. Well, thank you so much. Good luck, princess. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you so out. much. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet, nice you. To meet you. Thank you. So, Debbie and Dulce, you guys won last year. We won first prize in one of the contests called Owner and Dog Lookalike. No. <laughs> yes. wait, wait a minute. We won first prize and I have a ribbon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you know, you so wear the fabulous. same hair color. <laughs> and do you and Dulce go to the same hairdresser? Uh, no, I, I, I wish. I give her a little trim now and defend myself. Oh uh, my God. Good, but so what are you going to compete with this year? I think we're going to try in that same one again. and. Um, she she'll walk comedian? around. She's very busy. She comes on a whistle. No <laughs> way. I can call her from anywhere on a whistle and she'll come running. But it's, you know, 
She doesn't like to swim, you know, some other tricks. She's but beautiful. How old is she? other dog. She's seven. Beautiful. Seven. And I have a little three-legged cat at home, and they're like best friends. Oh, so, so cute, little so cat. Too. And they're twins, and they look alike. So it's very, it's very nice. So. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Oh, I right, appreciate it. Good luck. Nice seeing you here this day, and we'll keep you prized of our winnings. Okay, yes. <laughs> Courtney's also a member of the uh, Junior League. And this is Rex, Sexy Rexy. That's what we call him. Are you going to enter him? Oh, he's entered. Contestant and number three. So what are his talents? So he does a really cute trick. Okay. He sits up really cute. And then he's got this gorgeous co taco costume. So Halloween's on a Tuesday. So he's Taco Tuesday today. Taco Tuesday. That is great. And he's a rescue from Angels. He is. Oh, he's, he's beautiful. He's four years old, rescue. So tell me, what other, what are the competitions? What are the different events? Yeah, so we have best costume, what's in a name, the friendliest dog, and judge's choice, and best trick. And then do we do where they walk around and try? Yeah, so they're going to so call it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know if Rex is going to win that one, but, <laughs> but we're going to try. Well, he is really Thank sweet. You. This, I don't, I don't think this event's going to stop. I, mean, I, I hope not. Hugely popular. It is. It Will is. It continue. I, it's going to be in. We're hoping it's going to be an annual event. You know, we have a lot of members of the junior league that love dogs, including right. myself. There's so, so many you, dogs yeah, here. It's so great. We had a great turnout today, so right. I can see it, it's most likely going to continue. Boardman Park has definitely gone to the dogs. To For the sure. Day. For sure. I love that yeah. dog. <laughs> Oh my God, that dog is gorgeous. Let me see here, let me get a picture. What's her name? She's only three months old. Beautiful, how big is he gonna get? Madam President. 15, 12 pounds. Oh, it's beautiful, I love that dog. Big dogs, little dogs, and those in between were thrilled to display their talents at Palapalooza. And the opportunity for the owners to share their love for their pets made for a great event. Oh, a corgi! And her name is? Mr. Perobi. Let me get First a picture. Place, what's in the name? Oh, come here, Mr. Perobi. Oh. I'm having a hard time getting there. He's stopping to say hello to everybody. So that tells you that. <laughs> it's dog number 13. Oh, look at that. It's nipping by still. And finally, the judge's choice from our three judges. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.